Hello, I'm Leon Threet, and you're watching Wisdom for Living. And I'd like to share with you some insight on the subject matter, All Things New in 2015. Every year I approach a time of prayer and intercession on, uh, on the approaching year. And I uh, begin to pray in October, November, and December, begin to ask the Lord, how do I make 2015 a more glorious, a more memorable year than 2014? 2014 wasn't a bad year, but I really want to find out from the Lord on how to walk out His plans and purposes for 2015. And so what I'd like to share with you today is some of the wisdom I believe the Lord put in my heart. First, he gave it to me, and then I shared it with our congregation here at Christian Faith Assembly, and I'd like to share some of that wisdom with you uh, today. Wisdom for living is what you're watching, and we're looking at how to make all things new. Uh, coming from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, uh, we see some powerful uh, insight that the Lord gave to the nation of Israel. And I'd like to start there because uh, I believe that's what certainly everything stems from God's word. And the Lord gave Israel a promise. And I believe he's giving it to the church and to the body of Christ as well on how to make things different. Uh, first of all, the Lord is the source of change and growth and transformation in our lives. From Isaiah 43, verse 18, he says, Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. I believe that 2015 can be a year where God will do new, creative, and innovative things in our lives. He says, he says I'll do a new thing. He says, nor do you, should, should you consider the old things. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the old things. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? He says, I will make a, a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You know, I believe that 2015, I call it the year of the church. A couple of things I believe the Lord put in my heart about that is that 2015 is a year when God will do in the church things we've never seen before. He'll make a way out of no way. I believe that in 2015, that which was impossible in 14 and 13 is going to be very possible in 2015. I believe that God, God Almighty, as he promised the nation of Israel that he would do a new thing and that it would spring forth, I believe that in 2015 we're going to see God doing things in the body of Christ and it will literally spring forth and bring forth in our midst and in our lives new and unusual, miraculous things. Year of Miracles a season of the impossible being very possible. And so I'd like to share with you some of the wisdom that I believe the Lord put in my heart. Because when I begin to pray and ask the Lord about 2015, one of the first things I ask is, Lord, what is it that I need to do in order to be positioned to walk in these new things? Now, it's not me doing it, but how do I position myself in obedience to the things of God? How do I position myself to be positioned so that God can maximize his plans and his purpose in my life? And so here's some of the wisdom that I believe the Lord put in my heart. First of all, as I said earlier, these are things that God spoke to me about me. And so if you can glean from the wisdom that God spoke into my heart, and as I said, I shared it with our church here at Christian Faith Assembly, and I certainly believe that there's some wisdom that each of us can gain. The first thing I believe the Lord put in my heart was that I needed to replenish my faith. 2014 was a, was a year for me of great opportunity. We did a number of, uh, of uh, unusual and remarkable and some challenging things in 2014. Uh, I personally had an opportunity to uh, uh, travel to the Philippines on a mission trip. My oldest daughter got married in 2014. I ran for public office in 2014. And so it was a good year in some fashions, but it was a tremendously trying and testing year. Some very close friends and loved ones passed away in 2014. So we experienced some grief in 2014. So my, my, uh, my faith was tested. My 
my sense of confidence and assurance in God was at its very highest and was tested at a, at a whole new level. So one of the things the Lord spoke to me about is replenishing my faith. To replenish our faith means to renew our confidence in God. Um, and I believe in 20, 2015, we've got to take time to re-energize our faith and our confidence in God. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. 2015 must be a year that we have an uncommon faith in God's ability to do what God has promised. And so we need to replenish our faith. 2015 is a time, I believe, that we need to spend extended times in prayer. We need to spend time meditating on his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We, we've got to uh, spend time uh, building our faith. I also believe that 2015 will be a year and perhaps the years to follow, 2016 and 17, are gonna be times that we will be tested in our faith. Uh, the trying our faith will, will produce patience and we need to be uh, grounded in our faith toward God, confidence that God will do what God has promised he will do. And so in 2015, we need to replenish our faith. Secondly, in, in, in this season, we need to reaffirm our commitment. Not only our commitment to God, certainly that's the, on the very far front, the very forefront of what I'm saying. Re, reaffirm our commitment to God, that God, I'm committed to, to your word. I'm committed to the great commission. I'm committed to the great commandments to walk in love and, and with you and with all those around me. So I believe it's a season, 2015, is a time when we need to reaffirm our commitment. Now, I also believe because 2015 is a year of the church, I believe all of us must recommit our, our hearts to the church. You know, over the years I've witnessed uh, many who are in the faith, who say they love God, for whatever reason, they've left the church, the, the ecclesia, the assembly, the gathered ones, the called out ones. And so I believe in 2015, the church must recommit itself to what God's called us to. Recommit ourselves to the mission of taking the gospel to our nation and to the nations of the world. So I believe it's a season of reaffirming our commitment to God, to the things of God, and to the work of God. I also believe it's a time that we need to reaffirm our commitment to our families, to our children, and to those we've been entrusted with. So it's a year of reaffirming our commitments. Thirdly, 2015, and, and again, I'm sharing the wisdom that I believe God has put in, uh, in my heart and giving me, and I'm sharing it with you. You know, Proverbs 4 and 7, one of my favorite verses, it says, it, it says it, wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding. I believe that we need to pursue wisdom. You know, one of my life commitments is to get the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is the accurate insight into a matter. I need God's mind for 2015. You know, I've had too many seasons of my life where I, I was relying upon my own insight or my own understanding. You know, I constantly look back and kind of reassess, you know, my past. And, and I want to learn from that. And I want to get, get the wisdom of God. And so spending time in the word and spending time seeking the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the principal or primary thing. So get wisdom. You know, wisdom is like uh, a treasure. You've got to search for it. You've got to reach out for it. And so my heart's desire is, is to get the mind of God for 2015, the mind of God for the days that are before me so that I can maximize my op the opportunity to fulfill what God has placed on my life. So I'm getting wisdom and I'm sharing some of that wisdom uh, with you. So we said that we needed to get uh, uh, replenish our faith. Secondly, we said we need to reaffirm our commitment. And thirdly, the wisdom of God is rebuild through personal change. Now, I, I, I readily admit that I really don't like change for the sake of change. You know, some people, they just change things because 
you know, the furniture is not where they want it. Okay, let's just move it around. You know, I, I'm not quite like that. I like to know why I'm changing something and what am I changing it into. You know, you can change your living arrangements. You can go from a nice home to, a, to homelessness and that's change. So I'm not just talking about changing things just for the sake of change, but making significant, meaningful change in our lives. And so I believe that in 2015, even now, we need to rebuild through personal change. So when I'm talking about change, I'm talking about first and foremost, we need to personally change where there is a need for change. So we need to believe God for making the right changes and making adjustments in our lives, uh, changing in, 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 in the inner man. Because I don't really believe that we can experience lasting change around us if we're not experiencing true change within us. So when I talk about and talk mention about rebuilding through personal change is that we ourselves need to change. I'm asking God, Father, what is it that I need to change in my life? What is it that you keep putting your hand on in my life that you're saying, you need to change about this? I, I, I'm, I'm confident that those of you who are watching, that God has already spoken or put his finger on some things in your life that he's saying you need to change in this area. This needs to change. You see, until there are some significant changes within us, there will not be lasting change around us. And so we need to be ready to change. You know, there comes a time that when something's not working, that we need to change. And there are things certainly in my life that I believe that God is saying you need to change this. You see, uh, the old can frustrate the new season if we're not willing to change. Old mindsets, old belief systems, old patterns and methodologies that are not working, if it's not working, then change. Change it. And so I've been asking the Lord, Father, what is it that you need to change in my life? What is it that you're trying to show me that that has to change? And so I've been purposing to gain the wisdom and the insight uh, my children give me a hard time because I'm, I guess I'm kind of old school. So I, I still believe in coat and ties and suit and tie. And, you know, and my kids are keep saying, you need to wear more jeans. You need to wear jeans to church. And then I'm like, oh, so some changes for some of us is very difficult. But we need to be ready and willing in 2015, be ready for change where God is saying, hey, this has got to change. If it's not working, then be ready for change. Seek God on what needs to be changed and then how to make the changes necessary. I remember a important part in scripture in Jacob's life. As Jacob is coming back to his homeland, he's, he's coming to see his brother uh, Esau and he's, he's dealing with some personal fears related to that. And I think about the story where Jacob is wrestling with God. Uh, he says he's wrestling with an angel, but we know he's wrestling with the Lord. And actually what he's saying, he's, he's going back. He, he goes into his uh, uncle's uh, house for a season. And he's, he goes as Jacob, the trickster, the schemer, the deceiver. And he's wrestling this night alone. And notice this. This is a, a, about Jacob changing in his inner man, personally changing. And his name is Jacob, the trickster. And he's wrestling with an angel, wrestling with the Lord. And he tells the angel, I will not let you go until you bless me, until there's a change. And the angel asks Jacob, what's your name? He says, my name is Jacob. And, and the angel says, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, one who wrestles and prevails with God. Jacob got a change. He wanted change in his life. He wanted things to be different. He didn't want to go home the same way he left home as a trickster, a deceiver. And, I, you know, and what, what I gained from that is that his name is changed to Israel, one who wrestles and prevails with God. There must be a season in 2015 where we literally wrestle in the spirit that God would bring real change in our inner man. You know, if you have areas in your life that have not worked and they have been fruitless and unproductive, then a time with the Lord, a time in the word, a time in prayer, times in intercession where God will literally bring transformation within you so that the things can be different around you. It's interesting that when Jacob finishes wrestling with God, God literally touches his, his thigh and Jacob 
limps from that moment on. It appears that, you know, Jacob has a external change also, not only an internal name change, but he has a limp now. And his limp is to remind him that he's not the same self-reliant, arrogant deceiver of his past, but now he's one who's depending and relying upon the God who has brought change. And so, uh, so number, number three is rebuild through personal change. In 2015, may, may it be a year, a season where God is bringing real meaningful change in your life. Now, number four, what else? What else do I need to do in 2015 to make 2015 a new season, a new year, a, a, a time in which the impossible becomes very possible? And one of the areas, I believe, is renewing the mind to a new season. Not only experiencing change, but change also through a new mindset, renewing the mind. And it's an interesting uh, truth here because we have a responsibility to renew our minds toward the new season. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, transformation of, of personal life and, and change in the things going, going on around you certainly is centered in renewing our mind. You know, we consistently live in the arena of how we think. The word says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The limitations in our lives are often set by the boundaries of our thought life, how you see God, how you see others, and how you see yourself. And often we limit God. We limit ourselves and we limit others by how we see things, how we think about things. And so one of the things I, want, I believe the Lord spoke to me, and I'm sharing it with you, is that in 2015, we need to have a new mindset. We need to renew our mind to the possibilities of God, that, that we would live a life in 2015 and beyond without limits, that we can literally see uh, God doing new things because we're thinking things at a whole new level. We're seeing life at a whole new level. You see, an old mindset will, will change or limit a new season. Old thinking can restrict a new season. It can neutralize and nullify and limit a new opportunity. I believe, as I have already said, that 2015 is the year of new beginnings, a new start, a fresh beginning in life. But if we go into this new season where all things are now made possible, uh, all things are made new, if we go into this new season with old mindsets, we will, we will frustrate our new season. We will limit our new opportunities. And so one of the things we must do is renew our minds. We need, we need, we need to experience change by, by embracing a new mindset. In other words, get God's mind for your new season. Spend time with him to begin to see yourself and see others the way God would have us to see them. Without limits, without limitations, that, that all things are possible. And, and so a new mindset. Seeing life completely different. Change the way we think. Change how we see things. What, what an opportunity. Uh, in 2015, in this new thinking, we need new, new revelations about, about God's word, about others, and about what he wants to do in our own lives. And so we can experience uh, a new season, all things being made new, by uh, having a renewed mind toward the new season. A renewed mind toward who you are and what God wants to do in your life. Spending time with him. And spending time in the Word and spending time in the things of God so that God can bring a new season and partly by seeing life totally different. Number five, what do we need to do to make 2015 a memorable year? A year where there are no limits. A year when things are truly new in your life and in your surrounding. Reposition yourself as needed. Number five, reposition yourself as as needed. This follows change quite well. You know, one of the things I, I, I believe the Lord has been showing me and challenging me is to examine what's not working and then reposition myself accordingly. You see, if something hasn't been productive and something hasn't been fruitful, then I need to be repositioned so that I can move forward. Now, you know, I'm, I'm a former infantry Marine trained and I was trained as a machine gunner. You know, you can't use uh, 
uh, the, that skill very readily in this present uh, American climate, you know, machine gunner. But I was trained as a machine gunner. And one of the things about a machine gunner, when he sets up his machine gun, he, he creates what is called a line of fire, meaning that he sets a, a right parameter and a left parameter, and these becomes the boundaries in which the machine gun operates and shoots in. And then there may be another machine gunner or maybe even a third machine gunner that also has field of fire and, they, and we shoot or provide fire within that range. And so you operate within that. But here's what's interesting. If the enemy changes his position, then you must adjust your position or your field of fire because there's no need to fire within a range that there's no enemy, you know, to fire upon. No. So, so as an infantry tr trained Marine, you must reposition yourself or readjust your field of fire. And so it is in life. There are times that when something's not working, when the enemy's tactics have shifted or changed, then you must adjust or reposition yourself according to the assault or the threat of an enemy. You know, the things that were, uh, that were effective in one season may not be effective in this new season. So in 2015, we must reposition ourselves as needed. You know, the enemy as a roaring lion roams about seeking whom he may devour. So we need to reposition ourselves. We, it may mean we may need to take a different career path. It may mean a different job. It may mean, may mean that you need to adjust to a, go to a new city. In other words, we, we must be sensitive to the Lord and see what needs to be repositioned in our life. You know, I noticed in me there were a number of things that I needed to adjust in. I needed to re, be repositioned. I needed to challenge myself to go in different directions, take different paths, because the paths of the past are no longer uh, relevant for where I am in this particular season. Because seasons change, you must reposition yourself. Are you hearing this? This is an important principle. And again, it follows behind experiencing change and renewing our mind. The sixth area, as we talk about making 26, 2015 and 2016 and 17, making the, them years of great return, uh, then another area is releasing the old. You see, if, we, if we're not willing to let go of old things, we'll, we're not positioned to embrace new things. If we're going to go into 2015 and experience newness of life and God's able to do things in us in a, in a memorable fashion, then, then we must be willing to release the old areas. And again, I, I, I have to use myself as an example of that is that, you know, uh, sometimes I, I, I have the tendency to try to stay where things are comfortable. But we've got to reposition ourselves to release old, ineffective, uh, powerless um, areas of our life and e even methods that are not working. Philippians 3, uh, 12, 13, and 14 talks about uh, the Apostle Paul saying um, that he is forgetting the old. He says, he says, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. We've got to let go of things that are hindering us. Let go of the hurts and the pains and the disappointments of the past. Let go of, uh, of uh, hurtful relationships. We, we've got to be, in 2015, we've got to be quick to forgive the hurts of the past. We've got to be very quick in letting go and releasing old, fruitless, and non-productive things in our life. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily any people necessarily, but be mindful that when you can, you can outgrow an old season. And if you outgrow old seasons, some of the old relationships may fall away. And you must be willing to let go of some of those relationships. If there are relationships or friendships in your life that are, that are holding you back from going forward in the things that God's called you to, you must be willing to let go of that. You know, one of the things I say about relationships that are, for whatever reason, the season change, is that you really don't have to let them uh, push them out of your life, but you can literally outgrow them and they'll no longer be willing or able to go with you in your new season. So it's important to release old, fruitless, non-productive things 
and some relationships in this new season. So, you know, one of the, one of the songs uh, my children, my grandchildren have been singing come from the, from the uh, movie Frozen, Let It Go, Let It Go. And my grandson just walks around. That's all, the only part he knows is let it go. And it kind of reminds me of that. There's some things you must be willing to let go of. And I challenge you, as I believe the Lord has challenged me, to let go of the old fruitless areas of your life. If it hasn't worked in the past, then it probably will not work in your future. Number, number uh, seven in how to make 2015 uh, a new season, a fruitful, a rewarding, powerful season in your life is reclaim your vision and reclaim your dreams, your, your destiny, and your sense of hope for the future. Reclaim your why. Why do we do what we do? You know, you know, we've got to have in our lives, we've got to have a vision. We've got to have dreams. We've, we've got to have aspirations to go forward. It's very, very difficult to move forward. And I believe the Lord really is speaking to me about this because I've been in some places a long time. Uh, and, and I believe the Lord is reminding me the urgent need to have a dream, to have vision, to have a, a sense of destiny for my future. That, I, that there's a reason to get up in the, in the morning. You know, your dream and your vision, your, your, sense of, your sense of why you do what you do is critically important for how you live in life. You know, your dream becomes your energy. It becomes your motivating factor. And so reclaim your vision, reclaim your sense of destiny. You know, lay hold and, and embrace the hope that is set before you. I heard someone say this. I, I don't know uh, the author or the, or the uh, person who said this. We can live three days without, without water, seven days without food, but not one day without hope. And so it's important that you have hope for tomorrow. 2015, we've got to, we've got to lay hold and embrace the hope that is set before us. We've got, to, we've got to believe that God has a greater future for us than maybe we've had in the past. Our better days are still in front of us. Certainly for eternity, there's better days in front of us. But it's important that we reclaim our vision, our dream, our sense of destiny, having a hope for the future. Um, Proverbs says, uh, 29 and 18 says, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish where there is no redemptive revelation, no sense of hope for the future, people perish. You've got to have a dream. So, and I believe that that comes from the Lord. So again, I, I invite you, as the Lord has invited me, to spend time with God, to, to, to get the vision, to lay hold to the dream, the sense of reason for tomorrow, why tomorrow is so important, uh, that we need to press forward toward it. Vision gives reason and purpose to our energy you know, I often believe, <clears throat> uh, certainly for me, that the times that I've been the, the least motivated or even in states of depression or a season of depression, it's because I wasn't looking at the possibilities of tomorrow. I wasn't really looking at the dream, the vision that God had placed in me. I was rehearsing the pains and the disappointments of the past. And so I encourage you, as I believe the Lord is encouraging me, to lay hold of the dream, the vision, and the sense of destiny that is set before us. Well, thank you. Let's stop right there. We've covered seven or eight principles on how to make 2015 a memorable, all things new kind of season. And we'll begin to cover the remaining uh, several points on our next program. And so until the next time, this is Pastor Leon Three on Wisdom for Living.